now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar all about well-being in the workplace and um, as you can see we're going to be joined today by guest presenters from NHS uh, Wales Informatics Service. So um, we're going to be hearing a bit more about how they've uh, approached well-being and um, work workplace well-being and health at their organisation, particularly the service desk. Uh, so delighted today to have um, two guest presenters with us, Sarah Brooks and Brian Thomas, um, as I say, from NHS Wales Informatics Service um, and Sarah's Workforce and Organisational Development Manager there and Brian is Service Desk Specialist. So we're going to be hearing sort of from two sides um, today and hearing their story and um, what they've been up to there. And they've, I know they've been doing some really great things and I believe we're going to bring in um, some members of the Service Desk team a bit later on as well briefly. So that will be really great to hear from them direct too. So just to remind everyone listening, um, please do post your questions for our presenters um, throughout the session today and I'll come to those at the end and we'll get through as many as th of those as we can. We're also recording the session so if you do miss anything, if you have to leave early, don't worry, um, everyone will get an email with a link to that recording the next day as well. So let's get started and we should have Sarah and Brian on the line now. Hello, can you hear me? <coughs> Hi, yeah. Zoe. Hi, Hello. So, um, Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, and Sarah, we'll start with you. I think you're going to be speaking to us first. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar today. So, like Zoe said, my name is Sarah Brooks, and I'm Workforce and OD Manager for NHS Wales Informatics Service. I've worked for NHS Wales Informatics Service for eight years, and I lead on the wellbeing agenda here. I'm Brian Thomas and I've worked for the NHS for 28 years in various departments with 11 years being on the service desk. I'm one of the team leaders for the service desk and I've been in post for the past eight years. I helped establish the primary care service desk in 2008 and its subsequent relocation to our national service desk team in Cardiff in 2011. The service desk team has grown from 15 staff in 2010 to around 30 staff today currently responsible for the self-service portal and the service desk certification. Kerry ann and Gareth are also here from the service desk team and we'll be talking about their experiences later. So we're here today to talk about how we are empowering our employees to take steps to improve their health and well-being at work, the impact that this has had on the organisation as a whole and our plans for future initiatives to ensure the health, happiness and productivity of our workforce. I am personally very passionate about the well-being of our staff and empowering them to take responsibility for their own health by making simple changes in lifestyle that are relevant to them. So we are providing the tools, support and education to help staff take control of their health and well-being. When we formed in 2010, it was the merging of three organisations into one and we had approximately 350 employees. And this figure has grown to 600 staff today. We lead on the delivery of digital health and care services for NHS Wales, and our staff are employed in five locations in Wales. We're a fairly large service desk with around 30 staff in total. We support upwards of 16,000 users, averaging upwards of 10,000 incidents and service requests each month, so around 6,000 telephone calls and 5,000 emails. The team is split into three individual teams with their own group of customers. The National Service Desk mainly deals with our local health board service desks. Primary Care Service Desk supports the primary care community in NHS Wales, including all the GP practices, which is our largest group of customers, and our own local service desk, which is the largest team of the three, and they support ourselves, along with the Lindra NHS Trust, the Welsh Blood Service, and several other organisations. The three teams support a wide variety of services and who deals with which service much depend on who the customer is. The National Service Desk primarily support our national services such as our radiology system, our cancer system, CANISC, pathology system, LIMS and the Welsh Clinical Portal which is used by clinicians to view and request test re results from several other systems. As I've mentioned, the primary care service desk mainly supports the GP practices in Wales. So the main systems for this team are the clinical systems, EMIS Web and Vision, our electronic, electronic referral system, WCCG, and they also troubleshoot GPs remote access tokens so they can into the network remotely. 
a local service desk mainly deal with laptop PC, and printer issues from the practices and the other organizations they support. They too troubleshoot remote access tokens, but this time mainly for our organization and the other organizations they support. In September 2017, we had an initial assessment by the Service Desk Institute to see whether we were ready for the full assessment, which took place in May 2018, when we were awarded two-star certification. This certification is about continuous improvement, building capability for delivering service excellence by demonstrating competence, identifying key areas of improvement and celebrating success. The Service Desk is a good place to start a career in NHS Wales as it gives a good background and understanding of the organisation and how the Service Desk works and a number of our staff have progressed into other roles in the organisation. Um, these are the values of the organisation. So we have six key values and they are that we care, we learn, we take personal responsibility, we are proud of our organisation, we act with integrity and we respect and treat everyone how we would wish to be treated. Our values were developed by our staff for our staff about five years ago. These values underpin all of our activity from values-based recruitment, induction, appraisals, training and recognition. The NHS staff survey in 2018, we had a 56% response rate and the employee engagement index is a summary score presented as a percentage derived from the staff survey questionnaire. It is designed to inform individuals, teams and organisations about the degree of staff engagement. So the three themes here are intrinsic psychological engagement, ability to contribute to improvements at work and staff recommendation. So year on year, the engagement index has improved, which means that staff look forward to going to work, feel proud of the organisation and would recommend us as a place to work. Now, the BS 76,000 Value in People and BS 76,005 Diversity Inclusion Standards. These are frameworks for realising the full value <coughs> me, that staff bring to an organisation through their knowledge, skills, experience and behaviours and attitudes. <coughs> Sorry. Um, these standards are all about our staff and developing the organisation to be the best it can be. And we were successful in December for both these standards. And this quote here is from an employee who feels valued by our organisation. So, what have we done as an organisation? Well, working in healthcare is important to care for the health of our staff as we do for our patients. The Health and Wellbeing Group was established in 2012. And this group supports the implementation of the health and wellbeing framework through the development, monitoring and communication of wellbeing actions. To be truly successful, this requires board leadership commitment and facility for the wellbeing agenda. A passionate and proactive health and wellbeing group, a dedicated budget, employee engagement, active participation, and all of this is done in partnership with our union colleagues. Flexible working is available for all our staff and over the last few years there has been increased flexibility at work and we have implemented various working patterns to support work-life balance. In addition, our staff can purchase additional annual leave, request career breaks and work from home. Following staff feedback, we redesigned office space in our Cardiff office to provide quiet spaces to work, meeting pods and plants which has improved staff morale and engagement. Our staff across the offices have virtually climbed up Snowden on stock boxes and have access to standard desks and activity balls. As most of our roles are office based, we all know that sitting is the new smoking, so we encourage staff to use the standard desk and activity balls to improve their posture, and this has been a success. A screensaver was developed and rolled out on all staff computers to encourage them to have regular breaks and children in desk based exercises during the day. We signed the Time to Change Wales Pledge a few years ago, which is to tackle mental health stigma and discrimination. And we have trained mental health first aiders in all our offices and hold time to talk sessions to raise awareness about mental health. And it is an opportunity for staff to chat with a trained mental health first aider in confidence. We also promote the Mind Wellness Action Plans. All staff have access to occupational health services and an employee assistance programme, which supports employees in all areas of their work and personal life, the EAP programme is a confidential 24-hour service and offers all-round help for both personal and work-related issues. We actively promote physical wellbeing too, which includes our Cycle to Work scheme, discounted membership and encouraging walking meetings. 
Staff have established their own clubs too, such as five side football, running and spin classes. Our staff have access to a wide range of development opportunities, which includes apprenticeships, we have a career progression scheme, and we undertake coaching and mentoring. We have specific development workshops and a leadership development programme, which has been developed and four staff are undertaking a PhD. If an organisation's goal is to maximise productivity whilst boosting employee engagement, their wellbeing initiatives are a must. The healthier your employees are, both mentally and physically, the healthier the organisation is. Over the last two years, wellbeing workshops have been delivered to cater for staff at different stages of their life. Examples include understanding the teenage brain, midlife career financial planning, managing anxiety, bike clinics and many more. The first wellbeing initiative of 2019 was a menopause cafe to support the recently launched NHS Wales All Wales Menopause Policy. <clears throat> there is a strong focus on two-way communications. We have regular staff briefings, monthly newsletters and an updated internet site. This is a key area of activity to raise awareness of the wellbeing topics and signpost staff to support and advice. Staff feedback is always encouraged through briefings and staff surveys. We have three staff conferences and a fourth planned later this year. At each one, we have had a health and wellbeing exhibition for our staff, which includes stands to measure blood pressure, nutritional advice and complementary therapies. For the last two years, we have included staff and team awards, which is about living our values and awarded to staff and teams who have nominated for going above and beyond, demonstrating the values of our organisation. And this includes the service desk, who have won awards for the last two years. A number of suggestions from staff have been implemented. For example, topics for the wellbeing workshop. We've purchased a lot more stand-up desks and we've redesigned the work environment, taking into account staff feedback. The Wallage is a homeless charity and was the Enrys Charity of the Year 2017 and 2018. We raised over £1,600 and a corporate team completed the Cardiff Half Marathon in October. We have a calendar of events and support a number of health campaigns throughout the year, including National Back Week, No Smoking Day, Mental Health Week and many more. In addition, for the last few years, we've had a dedicated budget for employee wellbeing activities too. And these initiatives have led to the achievement of the gold corporate health standard. So I want to talk to you now about our journey to the gold corporate health standard. Corporate health standard is the part of the Healthy Working Wales programme, a national mark of quality for health and wellbeing in the workplace. It provides a framework and recognition for employers working to improve the health and wellbeing of their staff. It promotes good management practice and supports the organisation in taking active steps to promote the health and wellbeing of staff. This shows our journey from bronze in November 2016 to gold in December 2018. And the comments on this slide reflect what the assessors said at the time. And this demonstrates the progress that we have made over the last couple of years. So we're now going to be joined by Kerry Ann and Gareth from the service desk. Um, Kerry Ann, if we can start with you. Uh, can you explain a bit about your role and how the organisation has supported your wellbeing? Hi, yeah. um, I'm currently the team leader for the National Service Desk. Um, I've been on the National Service Desk for the last, well, I've worked in the, on the service desk, sorry, for the last nine years, and I manage a team of six. Um, around 12 months ago, I had some challenging personal issues. So I came into work, um, spoke to my manager, um, explained the situation, she straight away referred me to the employment assessment scheme um, and then gave me time off for um, appointments that I needed to get into. Um, I was able to do some flexible working, so working from home. So I found that very beneficial for the circumstances that I was in at the time. Um, I also lead the all social responsibility on the service, select, on the service desk. Um, I manage the tech shop. I sought out all the charity events. We're actually um, having a big sale now for Red Nose Day at the end of March. Um, with my team of six, I manage all their personal development and I also encourage them to attend courses 
and anything they would like to do to progress. Um, last year at the staff conference, I also had a massage from one of the wellbeing providers. Um, I'm very proud of the service desk. For the last two years, we have won um, an award at the staff conference on our values, and hopefully um, we can have another one again this year at the end of the year. So fingers crossed we'll be able to get another one. That's great. Thanks, Miriam. Thank you. And Gareth, what, what's your role and how has Henry supported yourself? Um, so I currently work on the local service desk just as a service desk officer. Um, I've been in Enris for about 18 months now, um, but when I first started I came in as an apprentice. Um, so I, my job role allowed me to complete my apprenticeship work just through desktop support, which is mainly what I do at the moment. Um, my managers constantly kept, kept me in the loop during my apprenticeship to assure me that I'd be kept on at the end of my apprenticeship, so I didn't have to worry about if I was going to have a job at the end of it. Um, since I finished, since I was made a permanent NWIS member of staff, um, I've gone on to sit with other teams just to see uh, where I'd like to go in the future. I've taken part in a few in-house courses, such as um, speaking with confidence and just working with Microsoft packages. Um, and I recently uh, do, I'm now doing a, a higher apprenticeship, which is funded by NWIS. Um, so I go to, I have a day release every week to go to Swansea University to study cyber security and networking. Um, so that's a four year course, um, totally funded by NWIS. Um, and there's also a few schemes I've taken advantage of, um, like the home electronics, um, which is like a, a tax scheme where we just get to buy um, products for a cheaper price and we pay them off monthly um, and my manager one day saw the state of my bike so she told me to go to the bike scheme because my bike was falling apart so I've now got a new bike as well. That's great, thanks guys. Thanks, thanks both for sharing your experiences. Okay, there are a couple more examples I'd like to share with you of staff that we've supported. We had one employee who was a long-term smoker and through um, support and assistance in work um, quit smoking. Um, we had another employee who um, injured their back and was told that long-standing issues with spine and posture was caused by spending too many years sitting hunched over monitors. So the active sitting board was purchased for this for and it suggested that for two and a half hours a day to improve their posture and core strength that they use it. So after only a week and a half, there was a marked improvement and um, the employee recovered much earlier than anticipated, continues to use the ball for a couple of hours a day to improve posture and core and hopefully protect from further injury. And this last picture on my side today is Debs. Now, Debs was diagnosed with type 1.5 diabetes in 2010. And since then, she has turned her life around and now manages her levels. In 2017, the organisation supported Debs with flexible working, reduce her working week for four months to allow her to train for the Ironman, which she completed in Sweden in August 2017. So in terms of future initiatives, we've got some ideas about what we want to do next. So we've got a service desk representative on our health and wellbeing group. We want to further develop employee recognition and reward. Um, and embed our health and wellbeing champions across the organisation. We continue to share good practice and learning with colleagues across NHS Wales. And um, this year, we'd like to continue to maintain a corporate health standard and perhaps go for platinum in 2020. So that's the end of our slideshow today. I'm more than happy for any one of us to, um, to answer any questions that anybody may have. Oh, wow, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, all of you. Um, well, there's so many things there, so many amazing things that um, you guys have been doing and um, are, are doing now. And are really quite, quite moving, I think, as well, actually hearing those personal stories and hearing from kerry Ann and Gareth. I thought that was really lovely. You can genuinely hear, you know, how engaged and, and kind of enthusiastic and positive they sound um, about what they're doing and you know and working for the organization in general and you can kind of see you can see it working um so let's have i've got a couple of questions myself but please people listening um if you've got some questions do type them into your your uh, webinar panel um in the questions pane and post those now and um, we'll get through as many of those as we can um yeah so please post them any questions you've got there um but so firstly so sarah can i just ask um 
something near the beginning you were talking about the engagement index um and how this how your sort of staff surveys feed into that is that something you guys developed in house nhs wales staff survey so all, mm. all health boards across nhs wales have um, have this survey so yeah. we do compare the benchmark to other nhs organizations okay so that's uh, that's consistent yeah yeah and and so the the data kind of just feeds into that index and then you do you share did you say you share those results with the organization you know with the rest of the staff yeah yeah, yeah we share the staff and then if there are ideas or improvements required from some of the feedback that we've had we develop action plans to be able to um to improve continue to fantastic and then presumably you can do a sort of you said we did sort of type thing and um and feedback the changes as yeah. well yeah. Okay, um, and I'm I'm interested. Um, you were talking about some of the results and the benefits, and you know, clearly we can see the personal benefits and the benefits that people have have had um, from the team. Have you, you know, as, as sort of an organisation, have you um, had a reduction, seen a reduction in things like absences and sickness leave, things like that? To be honest, our sickness absence is really good. Our yeah. sickness absence is always pretty much under three percent. Okay. It all makes sense. Our, our absence rate is at the moment probably about 2.5, 2.7%. Yep. So, okay. um, and our turnover is probably about 8%. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So, um, and I know that, you know, some of these things are, um, some of these things will be measured by, you know, different people, different departments, things like that. And some of them are, are just self evident. And uh, the way that the service desk, you know, um, uh, service desk team were talking and the stories that you shared you know you can see how much benefit everybody's had from some of these initiatives um i mean what what would you what do you start with though so some people listening might be you know at the very beginning of this type of journey and may not have had you know perhaps as very many opportunities to implement brand new schemes or um you know things that perhaps take a little bit of, of more time and money what would you say kind of one of the first things to start with would be if people kind of really wanting to just just make a start on this road Good question i think for me it was the establishment of the health and well-being group back in 2012 okay. i actually completed my masters on um, well-being and the responsibility of a line manager towards their staff well-being so that's where my interest came from right. and then from that i put together a case to say actually we really need to you know focus on the well-being of our staff so okay. for the creation of that group and having having staff on that group who are passionate about well-being who yes. can then really help to take that and spread that message you know Definitely, and engage yeah so yeah because and did and they were they sort of volunteer members who created that who joined that yeah. group then yeah, we have a from, from each directorate and we have um it's co-chaired by a director as well again it's really important that you have senior level commitment to this um, I think that's that's really, really important to make sure that it's seen as being really important and top of the agenda. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Definitely need that buy in and um, and those people, like you say, the advocates, people that mm -hmm. that will can push it forward. Um, fantastic. OK, so so that would be the first thing. And then within that group, I guess people then like step two would be then deciding for their particular service desk or their particular organisation, what the first active yeah. you know, steps would be for mm -hmm. them. OK. And some staff you know what do the staff want you yes. know a lot of the initiatives that we put in place are because staff have come forward you know the stand-up desk for example mm. that was um, a suggestion from a member of staff that said oh can we give this a try and as a result of that we've we've purchased more and they're actively used so you know it, it's looking at what staff want as well it's yeah. benefits to staff yeah. Um, and, and take that into account too. Yeah, lis really listening. Okay, brilliant. Um, we've got some listener questions coming in as well, so I'm going to put a few of those to you whilst we have um, we've got some time left. So, um, so um, Seri is asking uh, flexible working. So she says flexible working is a huge topic at the moment. Um, how do you work this with service desk teams? So this one might be more something that Brian can um, talk to us a bit about. And she says, has this presented challenges due to the nature of the work? And have you got, how have you got around this? Um, no, we, we tend to run on a, on a rotor basis, but it, it comes in quite handy with instances of sick or annual leave. So somebody might work extended past their rotated hours mm. uh, which they can then sort of take back um, when we're back up to full staff again yeah and um, kind of 
it benefits both really because at short notice uh, you know a member of the team will step in and, and complete an additional two hours for example okay so um, it could work both ways really yeah, yeah totally yeah that's that's brilliant okay and so I mean it, it depends and, and again you know it's all about making sure it fits for the organization and the service desk in question doesn't it so it's sort of some some good planning um some resource planning and you know just having it thought through I'd imagine as well <clears throat> Um, so if I can ask, um, there's a question from David um, about the some of the desk uh, exercises that were mentioned. Um, uh, staff for staff who are sitting at a desk for high percentages of the day. Um, tell us a little bit more about those types of exercises. So that's from yeah. David. Yeah, that's right. We had um, one of our health and wellbeing group members was a physiotherapist, so he okay. was linked to. The British Society of Physiotherapists hmm. and uh, we were able to use what they'd developed in, in terms of desk-based exercises mm -hmm. so this was about stretching um, getting up and moving around and it would be a screensaver that moved lots of exercises out moving yeah neck I liked around. that idea yeah different exercises. It was probably a series of about five or six different exercises that staff could do once they sat at the desk. So what we did is rolled this screensaver out across all the um, all our IT um, laptops across the organisation. And I did see staff using it, which was mm. really good. Yeah, and that's something that, you know, the service desk in particular can can sort of get involved with, you know, it's um, things like that. I think that's a really nice, simple idea, but effective. Um, and I think you, there's a good point there as well. You mentioned, you know, making sure, so where we've, where you've got that health and wellbeing group set up, uh, making sure you've got some people with, you know, the, the right skills and, and um, access to resources, say. And I guess making sure that where something is implemented, it's done right and it's kind of not going to be, you know, it's it's going to actually help rather than, you know, um, potentially causing, you know, with, without causing damage if something's done, you know, something's not done with the right advice or in, with the kind of expert input. So I think that's really important to consider as well, you know, who your resource is going to be and who you're, where, where you're going to kind of source these things from. I think it's really important. Pick up on what we talked about earlier around flexible working. Um, and I'm happy for Carrie Ann to dip in here as well. But, um, you know, we also support home working and, and different arrangements there. So as part of the business continuity, we do tests around staff working from home as well because we can connect from home as part of the service desk. So there's there's opportunities to do that as well. Yeah. And um, in the organisation, we work different patterns. So we work, um, some people work compressed hours. So they have a four-day week. Um, some yeah. work seven days night so we have all sorts of different I think there is part-time working on the um, on the service desk as well just to add to that yeah fantastic okay so um question from Emma then she's asking what's what have been some of the biggest barriers during this journey that you've faced and how have you overcome these so I suppose either of you from either of your points of view really so was that what are the biggest barriers yes yeah tell us about a couple of things that were you know challenges perhaps that you had to overcome because you know it's what people will be thinking about how, how they can um, get around some yeah. of these barriers I think it's about changing mindsets and behaviors a little bit um I, and and for some people seeing the benefits of what we're doing you know because um health and well-being is so important you know and and it's making sure that um, everybody understands the importance of that, but perhaps um, some it may help. It may mean that we have to work with some of our managers so that they see the benefits. You know, for example, releasing staff to attend the wellbeing workshops. Mm. You know, things like that. You know, we've 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 had to overcome some barriers through that as well. And it is about engaging in the benefits of what we're why we're doing it. Yeah. And our stats show that, like you say, our absence stats are very low. Um, and we have really good feedback through staff survey results so what we're doing in practice is working but to start with I've got to be honest there was probably when we set up the group mm -hmm. I would say that more negative than positive because why, why have you got a group to do this right. particular topic but I think now it's now embedded and you know everybody realizes the importance of well-being in the organization but it did I would say in the early days definitely okay. it did so take a managers and staff about the importance and why it's important and what difference it can make. same with flexible working you know that's another one that we've had to work on um you know and, and move so that you know 
people can understand the benefits of that more. So, and explaining benefits clearly yeah. and benchmarking with organizations that have done this. Exactly. You know, and I'm more yeah. than happy to put my contact details on there. So, if anybody wants to contact me after the um, webinar today, I'm more than happy to share what we've done in terms of our health and wellbeing framework and action plans and what we've put in place yeah. to support the well more than happy to share fantastic thank you yeah that's that's brilliant um that's that's really really uh kind of you we've had a, a question a similar question asking whether you'd um, be open to sharing so um that's that's really great thank you sarah um and yeah and i guess like as you say it's sort of educating and, and persisting really because some things like you know some of these things are quite new to some to some people and it does take time to embed so i think yes mm -hmm. keeping keeping that sort of momentum and um and drive to to see these things through keeping it going and making sure you've got those advocates in place um okay so we have another couple of questions here coming in um so yeah we've talked about we've talked about the um initial objections we've talked uh, there's um chris is asking about um whether you had any specific goals or milestones um that you had in mind like when you sort of started as to, to things that you wanted to achieve and whether you have any, any ideas of what those would could be if not yeah i suppose at the beginning it was a retention of staff mm -hmm. so one of one of the goals was around retention because we work in an it organization mm -hmm. skills resources mm -hmm. um, it was thinking about retention and how can we um, support our staff and by offering initiatives and um, flexible work and etc you know will mean that we're likely more likely to retain staff and they may not leave you know and did you measure down. yeah and then was that something you then measured in in tandem yeah. with yeah yeah okay fantastic so that's sort of one of the things can be measured and we talked earlier about you know um, absence rates and um, um, and the engagement index of course um, so I guess having some of those ideas and some of those measures in place at the at the very beginning is really key because uh, then you've got something to compare against when you start implementing these things and, and you can clearly show you know progression and you can, you can show the benefits in a kind of in a sort of a, a data driven way as well as well as individual and stories survey results as well so mm -hmm. you know we've had our surveys in the last few years so again looking at our data and improvements through that in terms of feedback from staff too yeah yes yeah Qual qualitative feedback as well mm -hmm. and and i think both sides are important especially when you're looking at convincing different types of people and different you know roles within the organization some people will want some numbers um yeah. but the the qualitative stuff and the stories that we've heard today has certainly been have been very very powerful okay so the well-being workshops you mentioned um who runs those? Are they run by some of the people from the health and wellbeing group internally? Um, do you ever get anybody in, you know, from the from outside the organisation? How does that work? Yeah, it's a, it's a really, um, um, my team delivers some of the internal workshops. Mm -hmm. So with, in terms of speaking with confidence, as Gareth mentioned earlier, um, and some appraisal workshops, etc. So we have a few internal workshops that the team deliver, uh, but we also bring in um, external speakers as and when necessary so we do have somebody who um who delivers the specific ones like understanding the teenage brain mm. um and the bike clinics for example we had dr bike come in and do the bike clinics and they help mm. fix some of our staff bikes so mm -hmm. we've had you know just it just depends on um mm. you know what what the requirement is really and who's got the skills to be able to deliver that yeah okay and and you know some of these things will require a, a certain um budget if you like to be allocated at the beginning and and again going back to the senior management buy-in that's something that you yeah. a lot of these things won't be possible without that initial initial buy-in so um yeah, yeah. We've in place for the last three years yeah oh, i think we're, lo we're losing a little bit of audio there with sarah just bear with us um sarah if you can if you can hear me you might just need to repeat yeah, I can hear you. Just repeat that last point. I said we've had the budget in place for three years now. Mm. So we've had a dedicated budget in place to, for all our health and wellbeing activities. So whether that's the purchase of equipment or um, yeah. 
or the, maybe for the wellbeing workshops or the mental health first aid training, etc. So that's specific. Yeah. So we can see year on year what we're spending against the wellbeing budget. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And I think um, I would say, you know, for people looking at, at setting something like that up um, from a starting point of, of there being no, no, um, you know, department or budget for it at all. I think there are some of those things that Sarah and Brian have mentioned today that are fairly, you know, um, quick wins, if you like, or some some of the free initiatives that you can be started where you can then start to see people can start to see the benefits and it can provide sort of some evidence for for growing it into something a bit more substantial, and a bit more official. Um, and I think I think we've you know we've heard so many great ideas today. Um, I just want to sort of thank you all again, really, for sharing those, and especially the people, the individuals that have sort of agreed to have their personal stories shared. Um, and I think that's really inspirational. Um, so thank you so much, Sarah and Brian, and um, obviously the team as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, thank you. And uh, thanks everyone for posting your questions. I can see uh, we have had quite a few in. Um, hopefully we've covered most of those off now. Um, if anyone wants to post one last one, we do have a few. If we do have some, uh, you know, a few more minutes left. If anyone has another question or two they'd like to post. Um, looking, just scanning through the ones that we've got on here now, they are quite. Um, there's a couple that I think we've we've sort of covered during our chat already. Um, a couple of people are asking if the recording will be available. So I can tell you we will be processing that today. Um, hopefully before the end of the day, I will get an email sent round to everybody who's registered um, with the link to, to review that recording. And I think that will be a really great one to show to your show to your teams, your bosses, your um, you know people that are potentially going to be involved and need the buy-in and show them all these great things that have been happening. So yeah, that will be coming round later. Um, so if you, if I can just skip back, Sarah, for a second while we just wait to see if there's a last question or two that come in. Um, if we can skip back to the certification, you know, you guys mentioned that um, it was something that you that you did, um, and I just want to make that link a bit clearer for people who perhaps aren't as aware of the certification program and. Because one of the concepts within there, you know, talks about um, well, there's the leadership concept and there's things within there, you know, managing people and there's um, the, the social responsibility aspect as well. But did you find that it kind of helped give the service desk in particular a little bit of um, structure and, and guidance almost as to um, some of the points in within there that could be addressed? Yeah, Brian and I spoke about that a little bit earlier in terms of the well-being and how that fit into the service test certification. And I think well-being just runs through it all. Yeah. So, you know, earlier we talked about all the different elements of well-being, you know, and it's mm. it's learning, it's about flexible working, it's about, you know, Kerry mentioned, Kerry I mentioned the corporate social responsibility and what we do for the charity, yeah. all of that under the wellbeing agenda so that fits nicely into the service desk certification yeah. um and elements of that yeah it does and you're right so brian i was just going to say if it, it fits into the um, employee satisfaction bits as well it, it sort of as sarah said it, it slots into many different mm. parts of the certification throughout and sometimes you might not even realize it mm. um but you're actually looking on it uh, yeah looking at the so, yeah. yeah, I think I think you're right, and it does, you know, obviously underlie. It's going to be underlying for lots and lots of those different areas, and um, um, across, you know, performance and, um, like you say, satis employee engagement, satisfaction, things like that. Um, and I think, you know, it's really it's really lovely to sort of hear when the service desk, um, when you when Kerry Ann and Gareth were talking as well. Um, the the development side of it and and the fact that you know it it helps people to sort of move through their personal goals as well as as kind of improving things for the organization and and that in turn you know benefits benefits the service desk benefits the rest of the business um and i think from a kind of business point of view it can only be a good can only be a good thing um it also sounds like wales is kind of leading the way i know you mentioned some of the um is it the gold uh, health certification is that right yeah. Right. yeah 
so that so that gives you some guidance as well i guess in terms of what things it's it's looking for and how it how it audits you yes. against that yeah, there's a um there's a list of criteria specific criteria that you have to reach to be able to achieve the standard mm -hmm. so yeah a lot of work into that um but through our journey you can see at the stages that we had a focus well-being and which was really positive but you could see by the time we got the gold at the end of last year that it's embedded in the organization now which is really good yeah and it's and i guess that's an important point as well it needs to become you know standard practice you know needs to become really embedded and um you know without taking the focus off of it 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 should sort of become the norm you know the normal ways of working there yeah, mm. yeah. okay fantastic well I think that is about all the questions that we've got today. Um, and again, you know, just want to thank you all so much for taking part. Um, thanks everyone who posted their questions and um, do have a look back at the recording and, and um, have a look at the, the slides that were uh, that Sarah was using as well and just grab all of those ideas. <laughs> um, so thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Brian. Thanks to Kerry ann and Gareth. Um, and we will hopefully see everybody for another webinar soon. Um, and good luck in the rest of your uh, future plans, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.